Chapter 11, First Bucket of Money, 30,000, Are you kidding? I'll give you 50,000, young girl, 60,000, another man bid, 70,000, 80,000, 120,000, everyone was shocked again, 120,000 for a blue and white porcelain bracelet from Ming and Qing Dynasty was way too much, Ginning was shocked as well, this was her first time to sell an antique, she knew antiques were expensive, but the price was still a great surprise to her, she thought 40,000 would be high enough, because the power of this bracelet wasn't strong, it wasn't worth too much because it had a short history, 120,000 meant nothing for Ginning in her last lifetime, but for now, it was a huge amount of money, in the end, Ginning sold the bracelet for 120,000 yuan, although everyone felt surprised by the high price, only experts knew this bracelet was worth much more than that in the market, a bracelet made of blue and white porcelain from Ming and Qing dynasty, even from a broken one, was expensive, nowadays, a blue and white porcelain plate from Ming and Qing dynasty was worth millions of yuan, the price of this bracelet wouldn't be lower than 200,000 in the market, though Ginning wasn't experienced, and had no idea how much exactly this bracelet was worth, she wouldn't regret, she needed money right now, and had no time to wait for a more generous buyer, besides, she didn't know how to put this bracelet into the market, there was a designated bank in the antique market, one needed to go to the bank for the money, Gunning didn't have a bank card, but her ID card, so she had one bank card on site, when she had received the money, she gave the bracelet to the buyer, and the service fee was transferred to the appraiser afterwards, the service fee ranged from hundreds to thousands, it depended on the seller, what Gunning had earned wasn't much in the antique industry, so she only needed to pay 2000 yuan, but Gunning was generous, who directly paid the appraiser 10,000, when she had left the bank, Gunning felt she was targeted, the antique street wasn't a safe place with all kinds of people around, it was quite normal that she had become someone's target as soon as she had earned a large amount of money, Gunning calmed down, she left the antique street without any delay, the minute Gunning had left the street, several men, who had been stalking her rushed ahead to stop her, four hoodlums around 20 years old surrounded Gunning, the others all ran away in fear, and no one was willing to help, give us all your money, or I'll teach you a lesson. The head of those hoodlums, who has yellow hair threatened Gunning. Oh, how? Gunning squinted, like she couldn't care less, and the onlookers were surprised by Gunning being so calm. Wasn't she scared? Was she pretending? Or, did she think anyone would help? Those hoodlums were notorious around this area, and no one dared to be involved. Don't ever hope that someone would help you. Let me tell you no one dare to, just give me your money, the man in yellow hair threatened once more, Gunning knew no one would help her, because everyone had run away, however, she was confident she could easily beat those bad guys, take it by yourself if you want, Gunning challenged him, knew those hoodlums was irritated at once, great, beat her, the man with yellow hair ordered, then, two hoodlums ran to Gunning, trying to catch her, but before they could come near her, Gunning kicked one man in the stomach, the man fell down on the ground in pain immediately, then, Gunning turned to another one, and punched him directly, the latter suffered at once, the other two hoodlums were in shock now, it was beyond their imagination that a teenage girl could be so violent, all of a sudden, a boy who rushed out nearby attacked the man in yellow hair, the man fell down instantly, the only one, who was left alone standing there, escaped right away, unfortunately, he ran too fast to recognize the direction, and hit a pole, then bounced back to the ground, Gunning laughed out loud by this funny scene, right at this moment, the boy who had attacked the hoodlum in yellow hair ran to Gunning, he said in excitement, Gunning, it is really you, I thought I was wrong, wow, you're so good and beat down too men easily, Gunning knew this boy, he was a senior from the top class in their high school, his name was Muk, Muk was nearly 5 apostrophe 11 tall, he was a handsome and good looking boy, Gunning and Muk were from different classes, she knew Muk was Qin Zheng's classmate and they were good friends, Muk also knew the truth behind she and Qin Zheng's relationship, but Muk was different from his friends, he was a good upright boy, and even told her secretly that Qin Zheng wasn't her Mr. Right, but back then, 
Gunning had loved Qin Zheng so much, she wouldn't listen to anyone else. Thinking of that, Gunning actually held a great opinion of Muk. Thank you so much, Muk. Gunning smiled to Muk, and thanked him sincerely. Though she was able to deal with it all on her own, Muk had helped her indeed. She ought to thank him for that. Gunning was a beautiful girl. She seemed ordinary only because she spent less time on appearance. Gunning's smile had made Muk flush. You're welcome. And I think even though I didn't help you, they couldn't hurt you at all. Muk was a little shy before Gunning. Anyway, thank you so much for helping me. Gunning said. Suddenly, Muk remembered something important. He looked at Gunning with astonishment. Oh, I've heard Qin Zheng has broken up with you on Friday, and then you've caught by a car accident. How are you right now? Muk had no intention to hurt Gunning's feelings. He really cared about her. But he hadn't been there in person, so he had only heard of it. He believed it was Qin Zheng's fault but he had no right to get involved in his friend's personal relations. Chapter 12, Gu King's Family Gunning's face changed a little, but not because of Muk. She knew Muk cared about her. Thus Gunning asked him back for fun, do I look like I'm in a bad condition? Um, Muk was struck dumb. Gunning was absolutely fine and well. She seemed like nothing had happened at all. Or, she wouldn't have been able to knock down two grown-ups. That's great. And now you know what kind of a person he is. So Muk intended to tell Gunning to give up any illusion on Qin Zheng, but he thought it wasn't his business after all. It'll never happen again. I've already given up on Qin Zheng. Gunning knew exactly what was on Muk's mind. She didn't care at all. Great to hear that. Muk felt relieved. Muk wasn't in love with Gunning actually. He just hated to see an innocent girl be bullied. It's late now. I have to go home, Gunning said. Sure. Bye bye, Muk replied. Since Gunning had made a lot of money today, so she took a taxi to go home. Gunning wanted to buy a smartphone at first, but it was too late for that. She didn't want Guman to be worried, so she got home directly. Indeed, Guman called her once when she was halfway, while it took Gunning another 20 minutes to be home. The taxi line was shorter and faster than a bus. So Gunning had spent only 40 minutes on her way home, a half less time than the bus. When Gunning had arrived at her home, it was almost 6 p.m. Guman had already prepared the dinner. The King's family were here today too. They came to visit Gunning because she had just left the hospital. Gunning's uncle named Jiang Zhu, and her cousin called Jiang Xinyu, Ningning's home. The minute Gunning walked in, Jiang Zhu and Guqing welcomed her. Aunt, uncle and Xinyu. Nice to meet you all, Gunning greeted them. Sister, nice to meet you too, Jiang Xinyu greeted Gunning. She was a shy girl. Jiang Xinyu was 15 years old now. She was a third grade student in middle school, and a quiet girl of few words. Luckily, she wasn't as self-abased as the old Gunning. She was academic and had lots of friends. Among the young generation in the Gu family, Jiang Xinyu only liked Gunning. For the rest, she had seen them through. Jiang Zhu was two years Gu King's senior, 45 years old, but looked older than his real age. He worked as a truck driver in a construction site. It was a labor work. Jiang Zhu earned thousands of yuan every month. With Gu King's salary, they lived a better life than Gunning and her mother. However, the family of Gu King still lived on a tight budget. They were not able to buy a house, but lived in a rental one. Though City F was a third tier city. The house price wasn't low, especially in the downtown. Even in the suburb, it cost at least hundreds of thousand yuan to buy a house for the whole family to live. Jiang Zhu's parents had passed away for a long time, so he didn't need to support his parents. But it was still very hard for him to save enough money because of expenditure on renting and tuition. So it was a sky-high price for them, as long as they had food to eat, clothes to wear, and their child could go to school. They felt happy. Although the family of Gu King lived on a tight budget, they would help Gunning and Guman whenever they could. When Gunning had been in hospital, the rest of the Gu family had ignored. Even when Guman had called them to borrow money, they all had rejected. Only Gu King and Jiang Zi had visited Gunning. Moreover, they had given Guman all of their savings to help Gunning with the surgery. Fortunately, Gunning had recovered at the end. Gunning didn't want to tell Guman that she had earned a lot of money. She wanted to wait till she could afford a house. And she surely would never forget the family of Gu King. She would also help them to live a good life when she became rich in the future. Thinking of that, 
Gunning opened her mouth suddenly, Mom, Aunt, and Uncle. I promise I'll let you live a good life when I become successful in the future. Everyone was surprised by Gunning. No matter if it was going to be true or not, they felt happy that Gunning cared about them. And Gunning had just grown up. Her future was still unpredictable. Great. We'll wait till the day come. Ningning, Ning, we believe you can be successful. Exactly. We all believe you. Ga King and Jiangzu was moved, and encouraged Ganning at the same time. Gaman then found out Ganning had changed. She was more outgoing now than before, because they really loved each other as family, they had a good time that day. Lying on the bed before falling asleep. Gunning took out her notebooks to read. Though Gunning was a good student in her previous incarnation, but not excellent enough. It was harder for Gunning in this incarnation to get into college. So, Gunning had to spend more time and energy on studying. She opened her notebooks, reading them ten lines at one sight. The content had all deeply borne in her mind. The Jade Eyes was really extraordinary. The second day was Monday. Guman had already called Gunning's head teacher for a few days' leave due to her accident. Though Gunning was fine now, Guman still wanted her to stay at home. But Gunning believed otherwise, she wanted to go to school. Guman agreed at the end. Gunning had encountered Xiao Fei Fai yesterday. She didn't want her head teacher to know that she had recovered but wasn't willing to attend the classes. Gunning didn't care about the difficulties. She just didn't want to get into any more trouble. The first class was at 6.50 a.m. It took Gunning around 20 minutes to get to her school by bus. Normally, Gunning would get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Guman went to work at half past 8 because the factory wasn't far away. It took a man half an hour on her way to work, so she left home at 7.40 a.m. Thus, to let Guman have more sleep, Gunning never eat breakfast at home, but would have all her three meals at her school. She only went back home when the last class had been finished. Chapter 13, Shameless People Gunning had a weekly allowance of 100 yuan. It wasn't much, but for Gunning it was a lot. When Gunning left her home, Guman gave her 100 yuan. Though Guning had a lot of money now, she didn't want anyone to know that. She took the money from Guman as usual. Guning didn't take the bus, but ran to her school. Because Guning wasn't in good health, she needed to exercise. Guning decided she would run to her school from now on, except on rainy days. The number 3 high school of City F was a normal high school. There were 5 high schools in City F only the number 1 high school was excellent and the rest were all common. Gunning had run for half an hour when she arrived at her school. Gunning was weak indeed. Half an hour of running made her exhausted. Gunning wanted to be strong, but she also knew it will take time to achieve her goal. So, she didn't want to push herself too hard. She wanted to accomplish it step by step. Gunning had left her home earlier, so it was still 20 minutes before the first class. She decided to have her breakfast first. She went to buy her breakfast and finished on her way back. Gunning? The second Gunning walked into the teaching building, a male voice called her with uncertainty. Gunning frowned tightly, because she knew who this familiar voice was. It was Qin Zheng. She looked over. It was Qin Zheng indeed. Qin Zheng was around 5 apostrophe 11 tall in a white t-shirt and jeans. He was a very handsome athletic boy, and popular among the girls. But what he had done to Gunning was so shameless. What? Gunning stayed emotionless, like the boy was merely a stranger to her. Actually it was the truth. Though she had all the memories of Gunning, she was tanganing after all. Except Guman and the family of the king, the rest were all strangers to Gunning. Even those relatives in the Gu family, she wouldn't care about them. Qin Zheng was the cause why Gunning had died. But Gunning had been reborn now. She had no intention to take revenge on him. If they wouldn't find her any trouble, she would let it go. But if they would, Gunning would fight back. Seeing Gunning, Qin Zheng was greatly surprised. Hadn't she been caught by a car accident? Why she looked so good now? Due to his astonishment, Qin Zheng didn't realize Gunning's attitude towards him had changed. He asked, Ah, are you alright? Though Qin Zheng didn't like Gunning, he felt guilty about her accident. And then? Gunning asked back, What? Qin Zheng didn't understand. What do you mean? Gunning snorted with laughter. She looked at Qin Zheng like he was an idiot. Qin Zheng, are you blind? Can't you see that I'm standing here right before your eyes? I'm fine. Leave me alone. You. Qin Zheng was displeased at once, 
because he had been humiliated. However, he was more surprised by Ganning's change. She was so brave and straightforward now, which was totally different from the old self-abased quiet Ganning. Was this because of the car accident? She had changed a lot. Yes. The soul had been exchanged, and the personality had changed as well. What? Ganning said calmly, like she hadn't shouted at him at all. Bravo. A loud female voice sounded. Those shameless people build their happiness on others' suffering, and they're even proud of that. The girl was in a school uniform with long straight hair. She had very beautiful features with big round eyes, thick lips, and looked cute. But her behavior was so different from her appearance. She swaggered over in abrasive manners. It was ten minutes away from the first class. There were many students walking inside. The girl's words attracted much attention. Kin Zheng was well known in their high school for his good looks, excellent performance and rich family. But, all those were in others' eyes. Only his closest friends knew what he was really liked. If he was a real good boy. He wouldn't have chased Gixio Xiao on a condition of hurting another innocent girl. However, the onlookers all stood on Qin Zheng's side. They didn't believe that what had happened between Qin Zheng and Ganning was immoral. They thought it was interesting instead. Only Muk had warned Ganning, and no one else, except them, knew the truth about what had happened. Qin Zheng hadn't allowed Ganning to tell others, because it had been a game from the beginning to the end. If anyone else knew Qin Zheng had a girlfriend like Ganning, who was poor, self-abased and bad at studying, he would be humiliated. Chu Pei Han, Yu Qin Zheng was annoyed while the crowd was confused. He wanted to argue back, but had no idea how to. He knew in his heart that he had done something bad. On the other side, Ganning frowned a little when she heard the name Chu Pei Han. She knew the girl was famous in school, but the girl wasn't famous for anything good. She was always late for classes involved in fights and so forth. She had received countless warnings. Normally, she would have been expelled, but she was so good at studying and always be the top 40. Moreover, she was from a powerful family, so she wasn't afraid of being expelled at all. Gee, don't be mad so easily. I didn't call your name after all. Chu Pei Hun laughed at Qin Zheng. Chapter 14 you mixy. Chu Pei Hun's arrogant attitude made Qin Zheng be in a rage. He was speechless though, because Chu Pei Hun indeed hadn't called his name. Qin Zheng knew it wasn't a wise decision to stay here longer. He snorted, glared at Chu Pei Hun, and gave Ganning a complicated glance, then was gone. Ha! I thought he was brave. He's merely a boring coward. Chu Pei Hun felt bored when Qin Zheng left. Qin Zheng hadn't gone far actually. He heard every word Chu Pei Hun had just said. He was irritated, but tried his best to curb his anger. Though Chu Pei Hun wasn't famous for anything good, Ganning liked her. She thought she was a good and funny girl. At least, Chu Pei Hun was being real. Hey, is this the boy who you have loved? What a choice. Chu Pei Hun raised her eyebrow with disdain. The reason why Chu Pei Hun knew everything is because she had happened to see the scene when Qin Zheng had broken up with Ganning. Though she strongly disagreed what Qin Zheng had done, she wasn't interested in getting involved. She stood up for Ganning today only because she agreed with every word Ganning had just said to Qin Zheng. Well, I guess every girl will meet a bad boy when she's young and dumb, Ganning joked. Yeah, sure. Chu Pei Hun laughed. Oh, it's almost the time. Let's go to the classroom. Ganning ignored Chu Pei Hun, running away. Chu Pei Hun followed up immediately, I like what you've said, and I'll use it in the future. Ganning didn't know what to say. Was she really enjoying swearing? Be my guest, Ganning replied. What else do you have? Chu Pei Hun asked sincerely. Ganning was speechless. Nothing. Ganning answered casually. She didn't want to be bothered any longer. Chu Pei Hun burst her lips, and closed her mouth. Chu Pei Hun studied at the second classroom, while Ganning at the fourth classroom. Their classrooms were on the same floor. After a while, both of them went up to the third floor. Chu Pei Hun entered her classroom first, and said goodbye to Ganning. In the fourth classroom of grade nine, the minute Ganning walked in, she felt unfriendly sights right away. She looked over. Xiao Fei Fei was staring at her in an evil way. There were several other girls around her who glared at Ganning in the same way. Yang Yulu shared a table with Xiao Fei Fei, 
and the girl sat before them called Wu Kinya. Those three girls were always together. Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya were Xiao Feifei's acolytes in fact, because they followed Xiao Feifei's orders. If Xiao Feifei hated Ganing, they would do the same thing. Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya was willing to be Xiao Feifei's acolytes for a reason. Xiao Feifei was from a rich family, while Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya were from a normal family. They could have a relatively luxurious lifestyle as long as they followed Xiao Feifei. Moreover, if any rich boy picked them, they could change their life. Xiao Feifei's family only had millions of wealth, and wasn't the super rich family. The super rich families would own hundreds of millions wealth. If a family didn't have that much assets, they wouldn't be called the super rich. But in normal people's eyes, Xiao Feifei's family was rich enough. The number three high school was a common high school without many real rich young generation, so people like Xiao Feifei was able to show off. Seeing Ganing coming, Xiao Feifei's sight turned eviler. Xiao Feifei was still angry about what had happened yesterday. Though she knew Ganing was different now, she wasn't scared of her. In her eyes, Ganing was still the poor pathetic girl. As for Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya, they were simply doing whatever Xiao Feifei did. Ganing ignored them instead. She couldn't care less about those ridiculous people. She found her seat. It was at the back row. Ganing. So nice to meet you again. You didn't come to class yesterday. I'm worried. After Ganing had sat down, the girl beside her talked to her immediately. Ganing barely had friends in her school, except this girl, Yumixi, who shared a desk with her. Yumixi was also from a poor family. Her mother had been lying sick on the bed for many years. Her father ran a breakfast shop to support the whole family. Yumixi's family was living on a tight budget as well because of her mother's illness and her tuition fee. Additionally, Yu Mixi's relatives disliked her family either. Those two poor girls ended up being good friends. Facing Yu Mixi's kindness, Ganing was moved. She explained, I didn't feel comfortable yesterday, so I didn't come. Oh, are you all right now? Yu Mixi asked. I'm fine, Ganing replied. Good to hear that. Yu Mixi was relieved. Ganing noticed her desk was clean today. She understood immediately that Yu Mixi had helped her. She felt grateful again. It was 6.50. The first class began. The students were supposed to read out loud, which helped them to remember the content. Ganing was reading the book quietly. Before long, the head teacher came. The head teacher's name was Jiang Kua. She was around 40 years old, and was a strict teacher. Most importantly, she treated every student equally, no matter if the student was from a poor or a rich family. Ganing liked this teacher. Jiang Kua stood in the front of the classroom. When her sight fell on Ganing, she was surprised. Ganing, come out with me. Then, Jiang Kua stepped out of the classroom first. Chapter 15, Do you have a crush on me? Seeing Ganing asked out by Jiang Kua, everyone was looking at her. Some were puzzled, and some gloated especially Xiao Feifei and her friends. Xiao Feifei believed the head teacher was going to blame Ganing for her yesterday's absence. Only Ganing stayed calm, and she knew the real intention of her head teacher. Ganing, you mixy called her with worry. It's fine. Ganing gave her a glance to comfort her. Professor Jiang, nice to see you again. Ganing greeted Jiang Kua politely. Ganing, your mother told me that you were in a car accident and needed a surgery. How could you be alright all of a sudden? Jiang Qiu asked with doubt. The day before yesterday, Gu Man had just called Jiang Qiu and told her Ganing had been caught by a car accident, but Ganing showed up as usual in school today. Everyone would ask what had actually happened. Ganing understood that, so she explained, I did have a car accident. My brain has been damaged and I fell into unconsciousness. The doctor said there was blood congestion in my brain and must be cleaned out by surgery. However, I woke up the next day, and the blood congestion was gone. So I'm fine now. Jiang Kua thought it was so unbelievable, but she didn't ask further. Miracles could happen. I'm glad you're fine, but you need to take care of yourself. If you feel uncomfortable, just let me know. Now, you can go back. Jiang Kua said. She cared about her student especially she just had recovered from a car accident. Thank you so much, Ganing thanked her teacher, then went back to classroom. The minute Ganing was back, everyone's sight fell on her again. They all wanted to know whether Jiang Kua had criticized her. However, 
Ganing looked the same as usual, nothing was different. Xiao Feifei and her friends felt upset. Hadn't Jiang Kua criticized Ganing? Or, Ganing was merely pretending that everything was fine. Exactly. She must be pretending. Jiang Kua must had strongly criticized her. But Xiao Feifei still felt uncomfortable to see that Ganing didn't wear a sad face. Ganing, are you alright? Yu Mixi asked immediately when Ganing sat down. I'm fine, Ganing smiled. Yu Mixi was relieved seeing Ganing was really fine. She continued to read when Jiang Kua walked in. After a while, Yu Mixi finally realized that Ganing was different, but she didn't know where and why. Ganing, on the other side, focused on her books. She read and flipped fast, bearing the context in her mind. Xiao Fei Fei paid her attention to Ganing once in a while. She saw how fast Ganing read a book. Look at Ganing, she's so good in pretending. How could she read a word by flipping so fast? And she even pretends to be a good student. Xiao Fei Fei said to Yang Yulu. Exactly, she's pretending to be a good student. Yang Yulu agreed. Xiao Fei Fei intended to cause trouble when the class was over. Yulu. Kinya, let me tell you something. Xiao Fei Fei called Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya, but her voice was loud enough to let everyone in the classroom hear it clearly. Everyone instantly knew what was going to happen next, and they have all their ears on them. Please tell us. Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya cooperated actively. I met somebody, who's too poor to afford a meal in a jewelry store yesterday. She was disliked because she didn't have much money, and she even said the jewelry of another person were fake. Wasn't she being so jealous of the rich? Xiao Fei Fei talked to Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya, while watching at Ganing all the time. It was apparent that the somebody in her story was precisely Ganing. No one doubted Xiao Fei Fei, but looked over at Ganing with disdain. Though many of them weren't from a rich family, they lived a much better life than Ganing. Moreover, none of them dared to walk in a jewelry store, which was the rich people's place. Of course she was jealous of the rich. Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya responded in a perfect accord. Yu Mixi glanced at Ganing with worry. She knew Ganing was not like that, and was mad at the other's behavior. Especially Xiao Fei Fei and her friends. They were all bullies. Wasn't a jewelry store open to anyone? Who said the poor couldn't walk in a jewelry store? And why did someone has to buy something once he or she walked in a jewelry store? But Yu Mixi was too weak to argue back. She only kept the anger to herself. Well. I think somebody does have a good appearance. If she can't buy it on her own, she can find herself a sugar daddy. As long as her sugar daddy is pleased, she's able to buy one then. Xiao Fei Fei added. Hearing this, everyone stared at Ganing in a strange way, like she had already found herself a sugar daddy. Even Ganing herself was displeased now. She threw a cold look at Xiao Fei Fei. The latter felt threatened at once. But a few seconds later, Xiao Fei Fei felt she had been humiliated, and was annoyed. She yelled at Ganing. What do you think you are? I'm not talking about you. If you're willing to admit, be my guest. Oh, have I admitted that you're talking about me? I'm just curious why do you keep looking at me while you're telling the story? Do you have a crush on me? Sorry to tell you, I only like boys. Ganing wore a serious face while she was joking. Ha ha, ha ha. Ha ha, everyone laughed out loud, which made Xiao Fei Fei feel embarrassed. She hit the desk with a snap sound, shouting at Ganing, Ganing, shut your mouth. You're literally shameless. I don't like you. If you dare to say it again, I'll tear you mouth apart. While saying this, Xiao Fei Fei seen she was ready to fight. Ganing, you're a shameless girl, and stay away from Fei Fei. Yang Yulu helped Xiao Fei Fei, and glared at Ganing. Exactly. Ganing, how could you be so shameless? Wu Kinya followed up with an evil face. Ganing Yu Mixi called her with concern, trying to stop her from standing up against Xiao Fei Fei. But before she could say it, Ganing stopped her by a glance. Ganing knew Yu Mixi was worried about her, but she was different now. She wasn't scared of Xiao Fei Fei any longer, and she wanted to deal with her issues by herself. Chapter 16 Beat Xiao Fei Fei. She hoped her real friends would understand her instead of questioning her decisions. Ganing decided to talk to Yu Mixi later about that. It was the first time that Yu Mixi had seen Ganing being so aggressive and brave. She closed her mouth and stayed quiet. Facing Xiao Fei Fei and her two helpers, Ganing stayed calm, 
Then you tell me why did you look at me all the time while you were telling the story? Ganning did it on purpose to irritate Xiao Feifei. Xiao Feifei immediately argued back with intense dislike, because the somebody was you. Do you want to deny it? You're poor and you dare to walk in a jewelry store. You couldn't afford anything in there, and you were jealous of those who could. If you want a piece of jewelry, take my advice and find yourself a sugar daddy, probably your sugar daddy. Xiao Feifei stopped all of a sudden, because her mouth was stuck by a ball of paper. The paper ball was exactly thrown by Gunning in a quick, violent and accurate way. Everyone was struck dumb with amazement. What? What has happened? Did Gunning just throw a paper ball into Xiao Feifei's mouth from three meters away? Yes, I'm sure you're right. Really? It couldn't be true. It must be a coincidence, probably. The rest remained speechless. Everyone was shocked, but believed it was merely a coincidence. Xiao Feifei almost swallowed the paper ball down, and felt disgusted. She spat the ball out at once, roaring in anger to Gunning, you bitch. How dare you? Gunning didn't say a word but approached Xiao Feifei step by step. She stared straight at Xiao Feifei, which frightened Xiao Feifei. Gunning walked to Xiao Feifei and soon she's in front of her. Before Xiao Feifei was able to react, she raised her hand and slapped Xiao Feifei across the face. Bam! A loud snap sound. Everyone was more than shocked now. Gunning beat Xiao Feifei. Not only had Gunning hit Xiao Feifei, she also had hit her with great force. Xiao Feifei was slapped dumb with a mark of palm on her face. Gunning, you're so rude and unkind. How could you hit Xiao Feifei? At that moment, Yang Chengjun argued, like it was all Gunning's fault. Everybody knew Yang Chengjun liked Xiao Feifei, and he would stand up for her no matter what she had done. Unfortunately, Xiao Feifei didn't like him. Though Yang Chengjun was tall and handsome, he was from an ordinary family. Xiao Feifei wouldn't like a boy from a much poorer family than hers. But Xiao Feifei enjoyed the feeling that she was protected by somebody, which showed she was charismatic. Xiao Feifei would not reject Yang Chengjun either. Probably Yang Chengjun still believed he had a chance, or he was merely enjoying chasing. He never gave up on Xiao Feifei. Wasn't she being so rude to humiliate me? Gunning asked back. But she didn't hit you, Yang Chengjun argued. Then I can humiliate her as well? Gunning sneered. You. Suddenly, Xiao Feifei shouted out. Gunning, how dare you beat me? You're a bitch. Xiao Feifei swore at Gunning and raised her hand. Before her hand fell down, Gunning caught it in the air. Everyone was astonished by Gunning's speed. She was able to catch Xiao Feifei's hand so quickly. You, if you dare to call me bitch anymore, I'll let you suffer more than a slap. Gunning warned coldly. Xiao Feifei felt the pressure immediately. She looked at Gunning with her mouth shut. The rest of the students in the classroom all remained silent. Nobody dared to utter a word. Gunning loosened Xiao Feifei's hand, returning back to her seat. After a few seconds, Xiao Feifei realized she had been hit and humiliated by Gunning. She tried to win back. Gunning, do you want to get away with it like that? Xiao Feifei shouted again. She threw a bottle of water on her desk to Gunning's head. Seeing this, almost everyone waited to witness another drama. Though they found Gunning was different and became brave as well as persuasive, they still had a very low opinion of her. In their eyes, no matter how Gunning had changed, she wasn't able to change the fact that she was from a poor family without any influence. As for Xiao Feifei, she was born in a rich powerful family. Gunning was doomed to fail in the end. It was so easy for Xiao Feifei's family to deal with such a little trouble like Gunning. So, what Gunning had done only raised dislike. Unexpectedly, Gunning turned around, hitting the bottle of water back at Xiao Feifei. The bottle knocked straight on Xiao Feifei's forehead. Her forehead was already starting to swell. Once again, everyone was amazed. If Gunning had done it by chance the last time, then she must has aimed at Xiao Feifei this time. Now, everyone's opinion of Gunning began to change. At short notice, Xiao Feifei cried out. Feifei Yang Yulu and Wu Kinya ran to check Xiao Feifei's injury. Gunning, Yu Yang Chengjun was annoyed. He clenched his fists, and was likely to fight with Gunning. Right at this moment, the head teacher came in. What happened? The head teacher asked seriously. Seeing the head teacher was here, Yang Chengjun immediately replied, It's Gunning. She slapped and hit Xiao Feifei, 
Chapter 17, Ain't Afraid of Shaofei Fei. Yang Chen Jun wanted to have a preemptive strike on Ganing, but he forgot that the head teacher never jumped to conclusions without knowing all the facts. So, the head teacher turned to Ganing and inquired, Ganing, can you explain all of that? Yes, I admit that I've hit Shaofei Fei only because she has insulted me first. I went to a jewelry store yesterday. I just wanted to take a look, but she humiliated me for being poor. And today, she laughed at me in front of everyone, saying I needed to find myself a sugar daddy. I simply used a ball of paper to shut her mouth, then she called me bitch. I was so irritated, and slapped her. She threw a bottle of water to me afterwards. I raised my hand to protect myself. Unexpectedly, the bottle of water flew right back at her, and hit her forehead. That's all. Gunning answered. She did tell the truth, but didn't say that she deliberately had aimed at Shaofei Fei to hit her by the bottle of water. Gunning think there was no need to hide. The head teacher was more than disappointed now. She turned to Shaofei Fei. Is it true? I shall fear if I wanted to argue, but she was afraid of the head teacher. She didn't say anything at the end, but lowered her head. Yang Cheng Jun, Wu Kinya and Yang Yulu remained quiet as well. They all didn't want to get into trouble. Now, the head teacher knew what really had happened. It was Xiao Fei Fei's fault to insult Gunning at first, then it was Gunning's fault to hit Xiao Fei Fei back. Since you both have made mistakes, you either both receive a punishment or forgive each other. You can choose. The head teacher decided to let them make the choice themselves. Punishment couldn't solve every problem. Their attitude mattered most. The head teacher didn't care whether they would fight again, as long as they didn't fight in the school. Gunning agreed. That was exactly what she wanted. So she said to Shaofei Fei casually, Shaofei Fei. You can choose whatever you want. I don't mind. Shaofei Fei thought it was a challenge though. She was angry and glared at Gunning. Shaofei Fei absolutely would not forgive Gunning. She was the one who had been injured after all. However, she didn't want to be punished neither. Thus, even though Shaofei Fei was annoyed, she had to call it an end. But she promised to herself that she would beat Gunning one day in the future. All right, Shaofei Fei was hurt and must go to the infirmary now, the head teacher said. Then, accompanied by Yang Yulu, Xiao Fei Fei went to the infirmary. Yang Cheng Jun glared at Gunning before he went back to his seat. The second class began. There were few people outside. Xiao Fei Fei said with anger, Gunning, let's go and see. I'll definitely pay you back. Sure, we must teach Gunning a lesson. Yang Yulu agreed immediately. The head teacher taught math. She was a strict teacher and no one dared to zone out. Gunning focused on the class as well. Though she owned the jade eyes, she needed to learn. Luckily, she was a good student in her last incarnation. It wasn't difficult for her to learn. As for you Mixie, she was still worried during the whole class. She felt slightly uncomfortable about Gunning's change, but she was more concerned that Shaofei Fei would revenge on Gunning. At last, the class was over. You Mixie asked Gunning at once. Gunning. You've had bad blood with Shaofei Fei, aren't you afraid? Before you Mixie could finish, Gunning interrupted her. Gunning wore a serious face. She said in a low voice, Mixie, I know you care about me, but I just want to let you know staying quiet and weak won't help you with anything. I've had enough, and I don't think Shaofei Fei is able to hurt me. If you're scared of her, you can stay away from me. I won't blame you. If you're still willing to be my friend, then get used to my changes. And I do hope you can change as well. You need to say no to whatever you dislike. You need to fight back against unfairness. Most importantly, you need to fight for what you want. I'm not going to force you to. It's all up to you. Gunning would not force you Mixie to change. She just wanted to help. What Gunning had said literally shocked you Mixie. She thought Gunning was right. If you were always weak and quiet. Nobody would care about your real feelings. Seeing Gunning being so outgoing and confident, Yu Mixie was encouraged. She wanted to change too. Though she was still afraid of Shaofei Fei, she wasn't willing to stay quiet and weak any longer. She wanted to live for herself. She would say no to her dislikes, fight against the unfairness, and fight for what she loved. Yu Mixie had the answer in her heart, but she couldn't help doubting herself. Gunning. You're right, being weak and quiet won't help us with anything. I hate to be humiliated anymore. I want to change, but can I? As long as you want to, 
Then you absolutely can, Gunning said. You Mixie was determined now, I will. Mixie, since you're my friend, I promise if you need me, I'll spare no effort to help you. And I hate betrayal. Please tell me directly if you don't want to be my friend, instead of hurting me for benefits. Gunning said, warned and promised at the same time. Chapter 18, Gixie Oxiao. Facing Gunning's warning and promise, Yu Mixi replied with honesty, Gunning, I cherish our friendship. Yes, though Yu Mixi was self-abased, she knew what was loyalty. Once she had taken somebody as her friend, she wouldn't betray. Great, I believe you, Gunning smiled lightly. For this time, Gunning sincerely took Yu Mixi as her friend. It wasn't easy for Gunning to trust someone, but as long as she decided to, she would take it seriously. Gunning of course wouldn't tell her friend everything, but she wouldn't hurt her friend either. She was always willing to help her friend. During this morning, Xiao Fei Fei, Yang Yulu, Wu Qinya and Yang Cheng Jun all glared at Gunning with hatred. Gunning knew Xiao Fei Fei wouldn't give up, but she wasn't afraid at all. She was different now. When they had finished morning classes, Gunning and Yu Mixi left the classroom. They went straight to the canteen. Fortunately, Xiao Fei Fei didn't find them any trouble. But the minute Gunning walked out of the teaching building, she was stopped by a girl. The girl was Gixi Oxiao, Gunning's cousin, who was one of the causes of Gunning's death. Though Gixi Oxiao wasn't as pretty as Gunning, she had good features. Otherwise Qin Zheng wouldn't have fallen in love with her. Moreover, Gixi Oxia was from a rich family. Although the Qin family has the power and some money, it wasn't enough. They needed more money to achieve their goals. Gunning, I didn't expect you could survive. Gixi Oxia's eyes were full of hatred and unkindness. She had had nightmares for two days after she had witnessed the car accident. But when she heard the news from Qin Zheng this morning that Gunning had survived, her hatred grew deeper. She had suffered from nightmares for two days, while Gunning was fine and healthy. Gixi Oxiao couldn't stand the truth. Gixi Oxiao was a selfish girl who only cared about herself. In her eyes, it was all Gunning's fault. If I really died because of that car accident, aren't you afraid that I'm going to find you as a ghost? Gunning stared at Gixi Oxiao with a fake smile on her face. Gunning knew Gixi Oxiao must be terrified and had two terrible days because of the car accident. Of course, Gixi Oxiao didn't feel guilty at all. She was merely scared. Yu Gixi Oxiao's face changed. Gunning had hit the point apparently. Though Gixi Oxiao was annoyed, she didn't want to mention the car accident anymore. Gunning, Qin Zheng never liked you anyway. You're no longer his girlfriend. So please stay away from him, and don't embarrass yourself. Gixi Oxiao said to Gunning. Gixi Oxiao was being proud like she was the winner. She just wanted to hurt Gunning. She wanted to see Gunning being sad and miserable. Unfortunately, Gunning had already changed. She would not be hurt, but instead felt disgusted. And in Gunning's eyes, Gixi Oxiao was merely a joke. I don't want such a terrible boy like him at all. Only girls like you will find him attractive. Disgusting. Gunning argued. What? Gixi Oxiao was surprised. She couldn't believe what she had just heard from Gunning. She said she disliked Qin Zheng, and even thought he was terrible. Gixi Oxiao wouldn't believe it. Gunning must be pretending that she didn't care. Gixi Oxiao responded afterwards, Gunning, keep lying to yourself. Do you really think I'll believe you? Believe it or not, I don't care. Gunning couldn't care less about Gixi Oxiao. Then, she walked away directly. You, Gixi Oxiao was irritated. She wanted to catch Gunning and argued back, but had to give up because she was waiting for Qin Zheng. After a while, Gixi Oxiao suddenly realized Gunning was a little different now. In the past, Gunning would never argue back. However, she was so aggressive now. Had her personality changed after the car accident? When they had walked away, Yu Mixi looked at Gunning once in a while. She seemed she had something to say. Just tell me what do you want to say, Gunning asked first. Though Gunning actually knew what Yu Mixi wanted to know, she still intended to let Yu Mixi ask out herself. After a few seconds, Yu Mixi couldn't help but inquire, Gunning, have you really been with Qin Zheng? It was beyond Yu Mixi's imagination that Qin Zheng would be with Gunning. The two were from hugely different backgrounds. Yu Mixi was curious. Kind of. Gixi Oxia wanted to humiliate me, so she let Qin Zheng chase me, then dumped me after two months. 
she merely wanted to see me being a joke, so I don't think I really have been with him. Gunning didn't hide, she told the truth. What? You Mixie was shocked. Then she felt aggrieved for Gunning, they're just a bunch of bullies. How could they do that to you? You Mixie felt sorry for Gunning, and also felt guilty for she couldn't do anything for her friend. It's fine, it's an old story. I'm good now. Gunning comforted you Mixie. You Mixie took a look at Gunning making sure she was actually good. Then you Mixie felt better. Did, did he take advantage of you? You Mixie asked later. No, we even didn't walk hand in hand, Gunning replied. Yes, they even hadn't walked hand in hand, let alone other intimate behaviors. Kin Zheng never liked Gunning. Their relationship was merely a game. Kin Zheng would never touch Gunning. Great, you Mixie was relieved. Gunning smiled but didn't explain further. She thought Yu Mixi was a lovely friend. When they finally arrived at the canteen, Yu Mixi went to take food, but asked Gunning to stay on her seat. Gunning knew Yu Mixi wanted to buy her lunch in case she would eat a beamed bun as usual, but Gunning rejected. Chapter 19, A Humiliation from Chenzo. This meal is on me. Let me tell you a secret. I've picked up some money on a road. It was said that you must share the money that you accidentally picked up with someone else, or you'll have bad luck. Gunning lied to you Mixie with the same old excuse. Really? That's great. Then this time is on you. I'll buy you a meal this afternoon. You Mixie didn't reject this time. She also had heard the old saying. The canteen had two floors. The first floor was for the public, providing cheap and not delicious food. The food was made in a large amount every time. Taste wasn't the first priority, as long as the food was cooked. The second floor was a private dining place. You could order whatever you wanted first, then the cook would cook for you one by one. Accordingly, the price was much higher. If you dined in the public cafeteria, ten yuan would be enough. However, if you dined in the private cafeteria, a hundred yuan were barely enough. So when Gunning proposed to have their meal on the second floor, Yu Mixi immediately refused. Gunning wouldn't listen to her, and walked to the second floor directly. Yu Mixi then had to follow up. Though the students in the private cafeteria weren't as many as the students in the public cafeteria, the second floor was mostly occupied because there were lots of rich kids. The second Gunning and her friend went upstairs, an unkind female voice sounded, Gee, isn't this Gunning from the fourth classroom? Isn't she the well-known poor student? Why is she here? Gunning actually wasn't famous at all. Only her classmates Orgixio Xiao and Qin Zheng's friends knew her. The girl had already mentioned Gunning was from the fourth classroom which meant she wasn't Gunning's classmate. The girl also couldn't be Qin Zheng's acquaintance. Gunning was sure that she must be a friend of Gixio Xiao's. Gunning had no intention to argue back. She looked over at the girl. The girl was exactly Gixio Xiao's good friend. Her name was Chen Zhao. She was a senior from the second classroom. Chen Zhao was born in a rich family as well. Her father, who had dozens of millions of assets, was a director of a famous real estate corporation. The corporation Chen Zhao's father worked for was in close cooperation with the company Gixio Xiao's father worked for. They gathered together often. Chen Zhao and Gixio Xiao became good friends naturally. Chen Zhao also knew what had happened between Gunning and Qin Zheng. However, Gixio Xiao and Qin Zheng had asked her to keep the truth to herself, so she never told anyone. Gunning just gave her a glance then ignored her. She went to an empty table with you Mixi, starting to order. Gunning ignored Chen Zhao, but in Chen Zhao's eyes, Gunning was a coward. She was used to laughing at Gunning all the time, and Gunning never had argued back. I think she probably has picked up money on a road. A girl who sat beside Chen Zhao added, they never miss any chance to make fun of Gunning. You Mixi, on the other side, was surprised that the girl knew the fact. Seeing you Mixi's face, Gunning didn't know how to explain. Before long, Gunning had finished their order. It was the best meal they ever had in school for all those years. Gunning, isn't this too much? Yu Mixi asked. They had spent almost 200 yuan. If they ate in the public cafeteria, 200 yuan were totally enough for a week. Don't worry, it's nothing. Gunning replied. Yu Mixi then closed her mouth. Oh, let me see what you two poor little girl have today. Chen Zha stood up, 
walking towards Gunning. She assumed Gunning and Yu Mixi must be too poor to have something really good. Only those rich girls who were bored would enjoy making fun of others. The minute Chen Zhao came over, Gunning put away the bill. She stood up and went to the cook. Gunning directly ignored Chen Zhao again. Chen Zhao was displeased. She reached out to grab the bill. However, Gunning wouldn't allow her to do that. Gunning moved slightly away. Chen Zhao grabbed nothing but air. She felt embarrassed, shouting at Gunning afterwards. Gunning, how dare you to escape? Chen Zhao's angry voice raised attention from many students. Gunning ignored Chen Zhao earlier because she didn't want to get into trouble. But now the trouble found her, Gunning decided to face it. She stopped, looking straight at Chen Zhao. Why not? Chen Zhao was struck dumb suddenly. She didn't expect Gunning would argue back. In Chen Zhao's eyes, Gunning was merely a poor, weak, miserable girl. She could bully Gunning whenever and wherever she wanted. But now everything was different. Gunning even argued her back in front of everyone. Chen Zhao felt shamed. Gunning. You know you're a poor girl and have no right to fight against me. What's wrong with me being a poor girl? It's none of your business. You have no right to stand in my way. Gunning argued again. She never liked Chen Zhao. You Chen Zhao was annoyed? Actually Chen Zhao did have no right to stand in others way. Now, the onlookers all believed Chen Zhao had shamed herself. Amid everyone's dislike, Chen Zhao was more than irritated. She knew she had no right to stand in Gunning's way. But she was so used to making fun of Gunning, Chen Zhao couldn't accept the fact that Gunning had stood up against her. Therefore, Chen Zhao didn't give up. Gunning, do you know your mother was pregnant before getting married? You're merely a bastard without a father. Chapter 20 Hit Chen Zhao, bam. Before Chen Zhao was able to finish, she was slapped heavily on the face. This time was much heavier than last time on Xiao Fei Fei's face. What Chen Zhao had said completely irritated Gunning. Not only had Chen Zhao humiliated Gunning, but also had humiliated her mother, which was absolutely unbearable. Chen Zhao was hit dumb, and didn't know what to do next all of a sudden. It was beyond her imagination that Gunning had the nerve to hit her. Everyone was also shocked by what had happened but no one disagreed. Though some of them disliked Gunning when they found out her background, they all believed it was rude to humiliate Gunning in that way. Not everyone would make fun of other people's pain. Gunning, how dare you hit me? Chen Zhao finally realized what she had got. She raised her hand, trying to beat Gunning. However, the second she raised her hand, she was caught tightly by Gunning. Chen Zhao was in pain immediately, but unable to run away. Gunning, let me go. Chen Zhao's face changed because of the pain. Gunning didn't let her go. She looked coldly at Chen Zhao. Her sight was like an icy sword on Chen Zhao's neck. Chen Zhao felt threatened at once with horror on her face. Chen Zhao was even trembling under the pressure of Gunning. Everyone was also astonished by Gunning's power. The private cafeteria was quiet like death all of a sudden. Gunning opened her mouth, Chen Zhao, I don't think I have ever hurt you. Why couldn't you stop doing this to me? Do you really think I'll let you get away with it when you've humiliated my mother before my face? Then, Gunning threw Chen Zhao away by her hand. Chen Zhao stumbled, and almost fell. The girl, who was with Chen Zhao, didn't dare to say a word. Chen Zhao herself was still in a shock. At the same time, Gixiao Xiao and her friends had just showed up on the second floor. They saw there was a crowd nearby, and were curious. They walked near. Then found out Gunning and Chen Zhao were in the center of the crowd. Gixiao Xiao immediately shoved through to the center. There was a swollen red palm mark on Chen Zhao's cheek. Gixiao Xiao was mad at once. So, what has happened? Chen Zhao heard Gixiao Xiao's voice, then got her mind back. Though she was scared of Gunning now, she was full of anger. But Chen Zhao didn't know what to say now. She only glared at Gunning with anger which was a response to Gixiao Xiao's question. Now, Gixiao Xiao knew Gunning had hit Chen Zhao. She found it hard to believe that Gunning had done that, but she shouted at Gunning at once. Gunning, how dare you hit Zhao? Are you insane? What? Gunning hit Chen Zhao? That's ridiculous. A boy named Zhang Yiming, who was with Qin Zheng, suddenly said out loud. He couldn't believe it was the fact. Exactly, they all knew what kind of a girl Gunning was. Gunning was always weak quiet, self-abased and never ever dared to argue with another person. It was impossible that Gunning had hit Chen Zhao. Indeed, I don't believe it. Neither, another boy called Fu Mingliang agreed, while Qin Zheng believed it. Yes, I did hit Chen Zhao, so what? 
Gunning admitted in front of everyone, then she turned to Gixio Xiao, it's none of your business. Hearing this, Zhang Yiming and Fu Mingliang were both astonished. What? She really hit Chen Zhou? How was it possible? Yu Gixio Xiao was annoyed. She was angry that Gunning dared to argue with her in public. Zhou is my friend, it is my business. Wow. Gunning sneered. So what are you gonna do? You have to pay for what you've done. You either knock your head on the ground for ten times, or let Zhou hit you back on the face for ten times, Gixio Xiao said with pure unkindness. Everyone held their breath after that. Ten times? Gixio Xiao was so cold-blooded, it was Chen Zhou who had humiliated Gunning first. Suddenly, Everyone had a different opinion of Gixio Xiao. Qin Zheng and his friends frowned with dissatisfaction too. They also thought it was too over. However, Qin Zheng still remembered what Gunning had done to him this morning, so he didn't stop Gixio Xiao. As for Zhang Yiming and Fu Mingliang, both of them lacked of sympathy. They all came to have fun. Moreover, they were also curious about what Gunning would do next after she had hit Chen Zhou. Oh, Gunning. It's you again. How come everyone wants to cause you trouble? You're pathetic. Before Gunning could say a word, a female voice sounded first in an ironic way, but without any unkindness. Gunning knew who this girl was when she heard her voice. It must be Chu Peihan. Indeed, it was Chu Peihan. Chu Peihan walked over with her hands in pockets, like a hoodlum. Everyone immediately stepped away and let her go through. They seemed scared of her. Chu Peihan was a widely known bad girl in their school. She was skillful at fighting, so no one dared to annoy her. Even Gixio Xia and Chen Zhao were willing to stay away from Chu Peihan. Thus, when Chu Peihan showed up, Gixio Xia and Chen Zhao lowered their voices at once. Qin Zheng, Zhang Yiming and Fu Mingliang weren't afraid of Chu Peihan though. They knew Chu Peihan was from a powerful family, and wouldn't stand up against her normally. Though Qin Zheng had been humiliated by Chu Peihan this morning and hated her, he didn't want to fight with her. 